Hi, Pio, Ohio. My name is Amanda Quint. I'm a software developer with about 11 years of professional experience, and I'm also a master's student in software management at Carnegie Mellon University. Today, I'm going to talk to you about software metrics and why we should go beyond velocity for your engineering team's success. So to start, what is velocity? Velocity is a software metric that helps answer the question, is your team's pace steady? So by measuring the number of story points, hours, or tasks delivered each iteration, you can determine if your team is delivering work on a steady cadence. Velocity can also help answer the question, how much work can be delivered? So for example, if your team is managing an average of 25 points per iteration, you know that a 100 point feature will take roughly four iterations to complete. And we often see velocity on either a burn up or a burn down chart. Now, before we go any further, I want to say that velocity is a useful metric. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying it's not the only useful metric. Consider, for example, earned business value. So take the scenario where your team has a high steady velocity, but your stakeholders really aren't seeing the value. It, with earned business value, you work with your stakeholder and choose an overall number of points, and then you assign the points to the smallest work item. So in this example, we took a thousand total points and we assigned them out to these features. Um, as you can see, feature A, we assign the points to the smallest item, um, tasks 1A-1 through 3, and on feature C, the smallest item was only story C. Now this helps you determine your priority. Here we see that feature A actually has more value than feature B or C, but then C comes in second. And since we re worked with our stakeholder to determine this, we also have um, an easy way to get feedback and we can course correct as needed. Now, you can also use this number in a burn up or burn down chart, much like you would with velocity. Another useful metric is lead time. So take the scenario where the team has a high steady velocity, but your users say that their items are never getting delivered. Now, this could be because your um, team is working on uh, technical debt or items that have been backlogged for a while, but um, lead time is a useful metric to measure how long it takes an item to get from beginning to end. And keep in mind that backlog items can really drive up your lead time. So another useful metric is cycle time, which is the time an item spends with your team out of the overall lead time. In this example, um, this would be after it leaves the engineering backlog and on from there. So um, here's an example of 10 stories and their lead time in days. So we took two numbers here. We took the average time, which was 20 days or four weeks. And we also took the standard deviation, which was four and a half days. And we're gonna call that a week. So we know that it takes this team roughly three to five weeks to complete a story from beginning to end. Um, and we can also use these numbers to identify outliers that you might wanna examine. For example, here, story five only took 10 days. So we could either see what went right there um, to get it done so quickly, or you know maybe it was just a really easy story. Another useful metric is cumulative flow. So take the scenario where the team delivers all their goals on time, but the stories are all completed on the last day of the sprint. The last day is a mad rush nightmare. And you can use cumulative flow to help identify bottlenecks in your process. You can also combine this with other metrics like your cycle time to help target problem areas. So to, on this chart, we're gonna follow um, 10 stories and then 11 from um, through the engineering process from the backlog to done. So on day one, we have most of our stories still in the backlog, a couple are in progress. On day six, a new story got added to the backlog because we've all been there when work gets added mid sprint. And by day 10, most things are done, but there's a couple things still reviewing and pre-release. Now, we can take this chart and build this graph. And this shows us how work is distributed. So for example, on day six, there is work in all five stages, but the bulk of it is in progress. And this helps us identify bottlenecks. So both reviewing and pre-release are pretty narrow with a wider queue growing behind them. So those could be possible bottlenecks where you want to um, uh, put some more resources there. And this is also helping you determine your cycle time contributors. So the width of the bands can tell you how long items are spending in certain um, states where cycle time grows. Now, three things to remember about software metrics. Your team stability matters. If your team is experiencing changes, whether that's changes in um, team members or projects or tool sets, your metrics will become temporarily unreliable. 
and you need to choose the right metrics. Um, a team that's working on feature enhancements and a team that's working on defects are going to care about different metrics. And there's no one right answer. You know, there's no perfect set of metrics and data can be interpreted differently. Choose the metrics um, that work for your team and don't rely too much on any one metric. So I'd like to thank the Pi Ohio organizers and thank you for watching. If you want to learn more about software metrics, here are a couple useful books. And if you want to reach out to me, here's my contact information. Thank you.